Hi, welcome to the Sifu Mimi Chan Show. Thanks for joining the conversation. Hello, hello, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Um, this is going to be a quick one because I'm running out of time, but I thought I would record a solo podcast before I head off overseas. So today I'm going to jump into a little bit of the Asian American Pacific Islander history update. A lot of people have been asking, what's going on with that now that the bill has been passed? So I thought I would kind of talk you a little bit through the process and also cover a little bit about Asian American Pacific Islander history and also what's in future for Make Us Visible Florida. So obviously our bill passed on May 9th. Yay! Still kind of coming off the high of the impossibility or improbability of that happening, but it did and it's done. And we are now in what we call a curriculum development phase, but kind of an in-between phase before curriculum development is basically a check and balance system. So what the Department of Education has done is they have a current civics work group that is already in place that works on standards and making sure that whatever is in legislation is then being met on the implementation end. So basically the first part was three meetings that involved this same work group going through and checking to see, okay, here's the actual law. Here's what's in place. Has that been met? And basically I was really fortunate and uh, insistent upon <laughs> making sure Make Us Visible Florida had representation in this work group because of course, as the organization coalition that got the bill passed has carried this forward also has special interest in Asian American history and also we have team members that are school teachers people who have curriculum development and uh, Asian American Pacific Islander history teaching backgrounds uh, involved with Make Us Visible Florida. So we're really excited to get them involved. Uh, it is is a bit of a process actually. So hopefully by the time this airs, we'll have more members of Make Us Visible Florida on that work group. But as a director for Make Us Visible Florida, the DOE did uh, approve me and, and already include me. So I was at the first three inaugural meetings for this specific work group tasked around com comparing the notes of what's happening in AAPI history now and have this are the standards being met according to now this new piece of legislation. So it was really fascinating. I, I've never been on that type of meeting before and everybody was actually refreshingly very uh, enthusiastic and these are all volunteers which I didn't know so I was really surprised at the process but it was nice to see that they were all taking the task very seriously and very much intention about, intentional about really trying to make sure the standard has been met. So I've been pretty pleased with the process thus far. I think we have a really, really long way to go. It's literally a three to five year process when we say that, but we've hit the ground running. And I think the next phase is now that we've kind of went through and decided, no, it's not met in this you know, grade level, or it's not met in this history course, now we can start to really dig in deep on what parts of history is included. In our Florida law, it requires the teaching of Japanese internment camps. So we are also making sure that is included in our history. And so this process is going to pick back up in November. There's going to be more meetings about this, and it is going to be ongoing for years and years and years. So I will keep you updated, but the ball is rolling. A lot of times we hear legislation's been passed, but it's just um, for show or, you know, pomp and circumstance like, oh yeah, yay, we, we did these wonderful things, but then nothing actually happens. Well, Make Us Visible Florida is going to ensure that this gets implemented correctly. And I have a fantastic and wonderful team of humans that are going to take that over uh, as I step away from this because I'm not a Florida educator, of course, but I do want to ensure that, that all of the work we did is now going to have that follow through. So we're really excited to see next steps and hopefully implementation is going to uh, be sooner than later. And hopefully 
in this first school year, we'll be able to maybe introduce a few things. I wanted to announce a special project, which if you are a podcast listener, you may have heard Jean Ha and I kind of talk about it already, but Make Us Visible has been putting out these really cool uh, AAPI, Asian American Pioneer coloring books. And they have two variations. This is the first one that came out. This is the second one that came out. And they are coll they're collaborating with, you know, Admirasia, and we're really appreciative of them. But basically, these Asian American pioneer coloring books is something we actually brought to Tallahassee. We brought this to the Capitol to show them like, look, here are things not only specific to Asian American history in the United States, but Asian American history in Florida, right? So there's really specific uh, historical pioneers and places and things like that that we're really excited to celebrate, but also to, to learn about. And the reason I started this initiative, as most of you who have been listening this last two and a half years of my life uh, knows, one is, of course, uh, the anti-Asian hate crimes that was happening around the country and education being the solution, but also selfishly, everyone, podcast listeners and viewers know that I like to do things because I want to learn about it. And because this was lacking in my education, because I didn't get to learn about it growing up, I thought it was absolutely the way forward. And I love these coloring books because they are not just coloring books, but has like a little biography of the, the place or the pioneer that we're highlighting, you know, through this historical timeline. And I'll read a few of them. I'll read a few of them for you today because I have to say there's quite a few in this book that I had never heard of and was fascinated to learn about and even specific to Florida. Now, those of you who are loyal listeners, you know about Lu Gim Gong already, who is the citrus wizard. And uh, so I'm not going to read that one, but I'm going to share with you a couple of the ones that I found fascinating through this two and a half year journey. Some of them is in our first book. Some of them is in our second book. And then I will share the big project, a little bit more of a details about the big project that I've been working on with Make Is Visible Florida and really, really excited to, to share about, which of course is our coloring book. But uh, Wong Kim Ark is the first one. And this actually, I didn't learn from the coloring book, but I had researched online as people would ask me, well, what's something that you didn't know that you you were shocked to kind of learn about. And I'm so embarrassed after hearing about this because this was, um, Wong Kim Ark was born and raised in San Francisco in the early 1870s. And after returning from a trip to China in 1895, he was barred from re-entry. So the US government refused to recognize his citizenship. So Wong brought his case to the Supreme Court and the court decided with Wong and the court sided with Wong, a pivotal moment for establishing citizenship through the place of birth. So when we are born in the United States and we're granted citizenship, Wong Kim Ark. And that's just kind of fascinating to realize that our roots go back as Asian Americans to not only establishing our place here, but others, other people who were born here from different backgrounds and knowing like our birthplace um, citizenship kind of comes from that. So that was always, that was, that was something that along the way, I think is one of the pioneers that was really always jumped out at me as something that was fascinating, but also embarrassing that I did not know this. And I know it's a little bit of a failure in the school system and the ability for us to have the foresight earlier on to start to fight for these things. And of course, the sadness is that we have to fight for them, that they're not, it's not already there, that the way our history is written, whether it's African-American history or Holocaust education, Hispanic, um, the history of Hispanic heritage and women's contributions, those are the things that are included in Florida law. But I absolutely believe personally, right? I absolutely believe personally that we need to learn more and that it's not being taught clearly and concisely. And there's so much controversy about, of course, the African-American history bill and the AP class that was, that was taken out and all of these things 
that has been in the news regarding our history here in Florida. But I know that there are a lot of organizations that have been set up to mobilize around that. I'm also excited that we are working towards Asian American history, which we know is intertwined with African American history and immigrants that have come here to Florida and to this country. And so we're excited to be able to utilize this to ensure that all of our histories are shared together and simultaneously because they are intertwined. We, we have so much overlay. And so this second uh, Make Us Visible coloring book was also really cool because I learned about the St. Malo or Melo Malo village, which is the first Asian American settlement. And those of you on YouTube, you can see I'm holding up little pictures of it. And it was in, you wanna guess? Louisiana. That I definitely did not know. Everybody's probably thinking San Francisco or something, right? But St. Malo was a fishing village formed in the 1700s on the shores of Lake Borgne, Borgne, Louisiana. And the majority of these settlers nicknamed Manila men after the capital of the Philippines were Filipino sailors fleeing from Spanish rule. Many of them joined the U.S. Army and helped fight the British War of 1812. They also transformed the shrimping industry by introducing their shrimp dance tradition, which separated the shells from the meat to dry. And this method of drying preserved shellfish before refrigerators were invented. The village flourished for many generations, and although hurricanes destroyed much of the land over time, their shrimping impact carries on. Uh, as someone who not only loves shrimp, but has much respect for Filipino culture and uh, knowing that this all kind of started in this region and, and this is very, very American, I think that's mad cool. So that was, that was one of the things that I thought was fascinating that I had never heard of until this, this coloring book. And this is actually something that we brought up in the recent work group for Florida when we talked about early settlement and we talked about impact here uh, to the U.S. in terms of, you know, early immigration. And so I'm really excited to have kids come up and tell me about it in the very near future. Growing up in Orlando, Florida, there was a, a pretty strong Filipino American population. I went to Catholic school very early in my childhood. And while there was far, there weren't very many Asians. There was a couple of Filipinos and, you know, the, with the Catholicism uh, tie there, it, there's, there was always a lot of Filipinos at church and everything too, right? So it seemed like a very um, strong immigrant uh, community. We used to have a Navy base in Orlando, Florida. We don't anymore. And as as Floridians know, Jacksonville is where the Filipinos are at. And so in uh, our Make Is Visible Florida book, you might get to learn a little bit more about that. So I'm very excited uh, about what's happening uh, with our Florida book because we are gonna be highlighting, just like this book, it'll be about Asian American pioneers and you know settlements or places that have had an impact on our Florida community. And it's gonna be all specific to Florida. So very, very excited that that's coming out. And for those of you who actually still want to get the current existing coloring books, you can do that through Make Us Visible. I'll link the website. Love donations for, for anything that you do want to get from Make Us Visible. The work that we're doing is super, super important. And while there are so many things happening in the world, and we have to pick and choose where to put our energy and we have to decide what we have capacity for, I think that any of the ones you choose is a good one. I just gave a lecture a few weeks ago for the Wallum anniversary. And those of you who, thank you again for watching and listening uh, to Oscar and I, we, we talk a lot about that event. But one of the things I spoke about as martial artists, so I'm speaking to my martial arts humans right now, is that my father instilled that martial artists have to hold themselves to a standard that requires us to constantly improve ourselves. 
Like that is really the goal, learning the self-control, learning the respect, learning hard work ethic, learning the discipline, but improvement of oneself. That is that is something for those of you who are wall alum, even going narrowing this down more, read that red book, listen to that red book. There is an audio book of it available on Amazon so you can hear my lovely voice as if you weren't already tired of it, but that is available. And, and those principles, he, he, he gave lectures on that in the 70s, but it's still so relevant today. And so that is something that kind of shapes who and who I am and what I do. And those principles have really kind of carried me forward. And so thinking about how am I bettering myself is just constantly in the back of my mind. But then as a teacher, it's like, how can I then teach students to do that? Because if we're all being better, kinder humans, then the world would be a better, kinder place. But Essentially, with so much going on in the world, I absolutely don't expect you to say like, this is the most important thing happening and this is all we should focus on. I would love it if all of my martial artists out there just picked what they were passionate about and decided to give a little bit of your talents, a little bit of your energy, a little bit of your time to some cause. There's so many to choose from right now. Um, tell me about it. Let me know what you're, what you're focused on. And I just need to, I need to see this one through, right? It's something I started. And what's been awesome is to hear people tell me that they've been hearing in their states, this is just getting started or that they're really excited that this is going to be happening and how important that is and what, how meaningful it's been. So just being able to get that feedback on, on why this is important to them uh, has been really, really great. And even just Asian American organizations uh, honoring me with awards. Uh, thank you to the Asian American Chamber of Commerce here in Orlando. Like, it's just been really nice to know that not about the award part, but that it's recognized that how important this is for, for not me, it's for that next generation to kind of be better than better than us in terms of learning more. Learning about St. Milo Village, uh, learning about some of these pioneers that I didn't know about, one of them that uh, came to mind when we were uh, in Tallahassee, we actually were excited to share, share this uh, person, which is George Yog DuPont. And millions of soldiers fought in the Civil War some for the South and others for the North. And one of the Northern soldiers was a private in the Union Army and a citizen of a nation across the ocean, Siam, which today is Thailand. Those of you who uh, love the King and I musical or, you know, the movies, whatnot, you should know that. Um, but his name was George DuPont and he was living in New Jersey City, New Jersey, when the war started. And in 1862, he joined the 13th New Jersey Volunteer Infantry and in less than a year fought in three of the Civil War's deadliest battles. And he took part in General Sherman's march to the sea. And so like him, other soldiers were also immigrants. And however, he was the only Asian. And after the war, he became a U.S. citizen. So how cool is that? I know that there is a lot about different uh, infantries, different groups that, that fought, like that had to be volunteers. I know the African Americans were utilized heavily in war efforts and things like that and had their stories. I certainly had never heard this story being told. So this was, this was pretty cool to learn. I do remember some hints of, of civil war history, but you know, it was a really long time ago since I've been in school. So I can, I can definitely say, I know I didn't learn about that growing up, but I know that I did get some of that American history. Uh, Kung Fu fans, you know who this is, Pui Chan, absolutely. He will absolutely be in our Florida book, best believe. And so our Florida book is actually going to be a bit different. So this is like 100% just coloring pages, not just, but coloring, prime, all, all coloring pages with the bios, which is super, super fascinating. But our workbook is going to be a little bit more uh, unit focused. So for example, Pui Chan, there's going to be also activities in that chapter for you to kind of 
be able to be creative, learn a little bit more and dig a little deeper, but also just different fun activities like crossword puzzles and mazes and connect the dots and copy or cut and paste, all, all, all the cut fun activities that any age starting from kindergarten and up can enjoy while learning. So I'm super excited about our Florida book and this we're in the, we're in the, development, I guess, in product in production phase of things right now. And by the time this airs, which will be in a few weeks, I'm hoping we would have set up some sort of fundraisers so that we can collect some funds to make sure that we can get these distributed to teachers, to students, so they can really start learning, not just about American history, but very specifically to Florida. And one of the big, I won't say surprises because you already heard Gene Haas working on this, but for my uh, Make His Visible Florida book, I was really excited to be able to kind of reach out to the community that has been supportive of me, but also friends and offering me rich conversation and friendship. And that is my comic creator community. And I'm super psyched to literally have assembled the Asian American uh, all-star team of comic creators who have agreed to be working on this book. And I'm not going to give you all the names now, but you do know Jean Ha already, who of course is, uh, from Wonder Woman Historia and May and, and a ton of other, uh, very popular superhero works. But not only is he a fantastic artist, but just like an incredible human. I think those of you who listened to the Rose City Comic Con, uh, saw, saw him there or listen to any of those other podcasts like he literally sat there and was doing sketching for a nonprofit and he sketched for like 11 hours for three days straight so three 11 hour days and it was just it was just constant and I was so impressed so not only is he fabulous but he is such a good person and so I'm super grateful to have him on board and for those of you who have heard me way, way back in the day when I interviewed this creator, you may have heard me refer to this character as my boyfriend, and that is Usagi Yojimbo. And I'm super, super excited because Usagi is going to be in our coloring book. Uh, those of you who don't know who Stan Sakai is, shame. No, uh, he is an unbelievable comic creator, artist, writer, and I think they're called inkers, but he used to do um, all of his art in black and white. And just recently, everything went to color. And so he doesn't do the coloring, but he's done every other lettering. He wins the Eisner like every year. I, listeners, you know who he is because you've heard him on my podcast, but so grateful that he's not only contributed by drawing something for us, but he drew Usagi for us. And these books, these, these coloring books are copyright free. They are for replication. So, so teachers don't have to go through <laughs> hoops to be able to make copies and Xeroxes for their kids. They don't have to have all these extra resources that they don't need. So this is, makes it a lot easier. And his generosity with even allowing that is, I'm like so overwhelmed. So really, really excited about that. And in addition, we also have, I'm gonna give you one more name drop today and I'm gonna save the others for later. And that is Cliff Chang. And for those of you who have no idea who that is, you may have seen Paper Girls on Amazon, but I don't like to just be like, oh, because it was a TV show. Oh, by the way, Usagi was also on Netflix, but Paper Girls is phenomenal. He also has some other amazing, amazing, amazing work. Um, Wonder Woman and also a Catwoman version of his artwork, but this stuff is so awesome. So he, he worked on this, of course, with Brian K. Vaughn, but he is also a contributor in our book. And all of these creators who are literally award-winning creators and have a million other things to draw, whether it's for other nonprofits, whether it's for their commissions or just trying to stay alive, feed their families, they've all dedicated and donated their, their time because this is something that they believe in. And so I am unbelievably grateful and I will over time be releasing and sharing more of our just literally, I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna hide it. I'm totally name dropping, but so literally uh, these, these creators who have decided to uh, help us out. I'm, I'm unbelievably grateful. So yes, 
So those are a few of our sneak peeks on what's coming in our Florida book. But I will end with one more pioneer uh, or Asian American uh, pioneer reading because I feel like if I don't know about it, and I mean, I'm not saying everybody here is um, as uneducated as I am in this, but I will say most people I spoke to and run into regarding you know, what have you been up to, Mimi? They're like, oh, wow, yeah, I never learned about Asian American history growing up either. So I think it's really awesome because I have this resource and a lot of you don't have the coloring book, but I can pick someone else out from the book and and let you kind of under, learn a little bit about them as well. And so here's one, and this is a Vietnamese American and his name is Tuan Vo Din. And here you go. So our YouTube YouTubers can see the book, uh, and he was born in Vietnam and moved to the U.S. in 1975. He loves many areas of science and specialties are photonics, which I'm going to admit, I didn't really know much about what that was, but it's the science of light. I'm sure I learned that at some point because, you know, it seems like it's something I would learn, but I have to admit, I was not the brightest science student. And nan so the science of light and nanotechnology, which is technology so small, it's the size of atoms and molecules. By using a combination of his science skills, Vodin is currently building technology that would use lasers and nanotech to hunt down and destroy cancer cells. He's won many awards for his research and dreams of a world where cancer can be quickly cured and maybe one day with his hard work and the hard work of others, his dreams will come true. Amazing. So not only do we have pioneers from our past, but we have people who are making history right now. And when I gave my speech a few weeks ago, I talked about why this was so important to me and I've shared it here. And it isn't just because like, I feel like my father and his legacy and everything we've done is a part of Asian American history, but it's true. We're creating Asian American history right now by making sure people learn about it. Right. And there are so many people that are constantly changing this world for the better. And I want to learn about it. And so if you believe in that. I would urge you to get involved in one of your state chapters. I would urge you to donate to our cause. I would urge you to utilize your time and resources towards something that is important to you. I'm sure you're doing that already. I know that we're all super, super overwhelmed and there's just a lot going on in the world. I haven't shared my thoughts publicly on all of the wars that's been going on. Honestly, it's just been, it's been quite a lot. It's been quite a lot to digest and it's been very frustrating. All I know is that I hate seeing what's happening and I hate that civilians and innocent people are the ones that suffer when these things happen. And we have been doing our best to ensure that all of our communities here feel safe, feel included, and that they know that they belong. And especially at the Wallam Temple, it's something that we've been trying to ensure. And that isn't just our friends um, from those regions of the world where there's war, but that's our friends from all walks of life. So that's how I've been feeling lately. I thought today would be a good not your model minority day. That's uh, for listeners, that's what I'm wearing in this episode. And I just wanted to share a little bit about where we're at with our Asian American history inclusion, and also a little sneak peek at a project that I'm working on that has to do with our curriculum development. And just to thank you all again for being so supportive and sharing your thoughts, sharing your encouragement and support for my patrons. Oh my goodness. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. I appreciate you. And I have a new patron who actually is a longtime supporter of Wallum and a longtime supporter of many of the causes that we have put up on the social media and is always donating. So thank you so much to Joe Roche, uh, former Wallum student, but still Wallum family. A, I really appreciate you. So thank you so much for your support. It is super meaningful and allows me 
to be able to do this because my lovely edit team who had to edit out all of my mistakes on this, uh, that is that is how I'm able to get this stuff out here is, is by that and also gives me more freed up time so I can continue to do social justice and to continue to put my efforts and what I think are my talents towards something that I believe in too. So hope you're all having a great day and I will talk to you soon. Bye. That's all for today's episode. Thanks for listening to the Sifu Mimi Chan Show. Please subscribe and rate my podcast on your platform of choice and leave a review. You can become a patron of the show at patreon.com slash Chan to help keep this podcast going. Follow me and interact on social media at Sifu Chan on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook.